let me show you all display settings available on Samsung Galaxy S25. So let's head to settings and let's open display. At the top we can choose the theme for our phone, we can switch between light and the dark. And if you go to dark mode settings you will find the schedule dark mode option. So if you enable turn on as scheduled you can create a custom schedule when the dark mode should be enabled and disabled. You can also set sunset to sunrise which is based on the location. Besides that we have the brightness slider where we can change the brightness of the screen. We have the automatic screen brightness option which is called adaptive brightness and if adaptive brightness is disabled we have extra brightness option as well that allows us to increase the maximum brightness. We have motion smoothness where we can choose the screen refresh rate. If you use adaptive the screen refresh rate reaches up to 120 hertz and if you choose standard it is stuck at 60. Besides that we have eye comfort shield which is the blue light filter which turns your screen orange for your eyes protection. Then we have adaptive color tone which adjusts colors and white balance based on ambient light conditions to make colors appear more natural in different environments. We also have screen mode where we can adjust the colors on the screen. We can make them more vivid or more natural. In case you want to adjust the white balance in the, then you can choose vivid option and here we can move to the left to make it more cool and blue-ish or to the right to make it warm. And in advanced settings you can adjust the white balance even more as well as the vividness. Besides that we can customize the font by changing its size. If the font supports bold option then of course we can make the font bold as well. And we can choose the font itself by going to font style. Here we have some font options that we can choose. Then we can also go to screen zoom in order to make the screen smaller or bigger. And we have camera cutout which allows you to hide the camera cutout in specific apps. By default all apps are set to auto so the app itself decides if the camera cutout has to be enabled or disabled. But of course you can adjust that by yourself and choose if you want to show or hide it. We also have screen timeout where we can choose the inactivity time after which the screen will turn off. Easy mode allows you to make pretty much everything bigger. As you can see there is less widgets on the screen, app sizes are increased and it should be easier to use. Furthermore we have edge panels which is like a sidebar where you can add your own apps uh, for quick navigation between these apps. And then we also have navigation bar where we can use buttons or swipe gestures in order to navigate on the phone. We have also more options where we can choose for instance the button order or if you use swipe gestures we can adjust the gesture sensitivity. Furthermore we have circle to search which can be enabled and disabled over here and in order to use it if you use buttons you can press and hold the home button and select the area that you want to search for on the internet and if you use gestures you want to press and hold this bar at the bottom of the screen. Now let's go back to display. We have the accidental touch protection as well as touch sensitivity uh, which the latter one is used for increasing the sensitivity in case the screen protector uh, causes some issues. And we also have the charging information which can be enabled and disabled over here. This shows battery level and estimated time until full when always on display is off or not shown. And we also have screensaver where we can choose colors for the screensaver photo table, photo frame or photos. Photos can be set by using this gear icon on the right side. And that's all. Thanks for watching, leave a like and subscribe to my channel and see you in my next videos. Bye!